I think as we go forward today, the real question to focus on is why the United States made the decisions that they made in regards to the development of nuclear weapons. And then also, um, why we develop them in the first place. I think that those are important questions to answer. And I find that the answer to them sounds very, very simple because of how clear cut it was. And yet it's, it's really important to understand why. And the reason why we made these decisions and why we developed nuclear bombs in the first place is because at the time, the United States was motivated by a fear that they were engaged in a race with Nazi Germany to develop those weapons. That is the reason that leads to a lot of the things that we're going to talk about in this episode. It's the fact that the Germans at the time seemed to also be trying to develop these weapons, and that race ultimately becomes an incredibly important part of history, as we now know. But I think that we need to really, really step inside the minds of the people at that time and why they would make a decision to develop such powerful weapons. And to get an understanding of how quickly things were moving in a very, very bad direction at the start of the Manhattan Project, just consider the events that happened in the weeks leading up to the beginning of the Manhattan Project. So remember, we're in the summer of 1942 here. Less than three weeks before the project began, the first reports of Jews being gassed began to circulate. So the photo that I used for the thumbnail of this episode is actually a picture of a guy named uh, Labus Herblick. And we don't know a, a bunch about Mr. Herblick, but what we do know is that he was a 25-year-old Polish shoemaker, and he both arrived at Auschwitz and was murdered in the gas chambers there within the three-week period before the founding of the Manhattan Project. And the reason that he found himself in Auschwitz, uh, his crime, so to speak, was simply the fact that he was a Jewish person in Poland in 1942. In fact. There were 300,000 Polish Jews just like him who were sent to Auschwitz in May of 1942 alone. So one month before the founding of the Manhattan Project, 300,000 Polish Jews were sent to the concentration camps where a lot of them, like, uh, for example, Labus, found themselves um, in the camps for maybe a week before they were killed. Um, at the time, and we'll get into this a little more later, but like two and three weeks was fairly rare. And the, the reason that I used him for the thumbnail of the episode is, is what I talked about. It's the idea that history is best learned through empathy. I think when you see the photo of him, you, you realize that he looks just like anyone you know right now. He was 25 years old and he was killed because of this evil ideology that was spreading so rapidly at the time. Um, I want to go to a quote here, um, because I think it's important that we look, once again, uh, through, this, uh, through this lens of empathy. And so I think getting quotes from people who were alive at that time is a great way to do that. So, quote, All were expecting to die. And every day of their life was a day of suffering and torment. All had witnessed terrible crimes, and the Germans would have uh, spared none of them. The gas chambers awaited them. Most, in fact, were sent to the gas chambers after only a few days of work, and were replaced by people from a new contingent. Only a few dozen people lived for weeks and months, rather than for days and hours. Sheol Rachman. And he was a survivor of Auschwitz, actually. So um, that was his, uh, that was his um, quote describing what it was like there at the time. Um, so two weeks before the Manhattan Project began, the Nazi allied Japanese attacked Midway Island, which led to the Battle of Midway. 
in which 307 American soldiers were killed. Quote, On the second firing pass by the attacking Zeros, our turret gunner Manning was hit, and his turret put out of action, recounted Farrier. The sight of his slumped and lifeless body startled me. Quite suddenly, I was a scared, mature old man at 17. I had never seen death before, and here in one awesome moment, my friends and I were face to face with it. I lost all sense of time and direction, but huddled by my gun, hoping for a chance to shoot back. That's Radio Man Second Class Harry Farrier. He was of the uh, Torpedo Squadron VT-8, and his aircraft actually um, was the only one from his squadron to survive the Battle of Midway. Now, this is also the same time frame that two weeks before the founding of the Manhattan Project that the Japanese engaged in the invasion and occupation of Attu and Kiska, which was the first invasion of American soil in 128 years. So you start to get the sense, like, with some of these stories of how quickly things are moving just in the few weeks before the founding of the Manhattan Project. Now, eight days before the Manhattan Project began, the Nazis burned the Czech village of Lidice. And I think, I think I'm pronouncing that right. I was trying to look into it. I might not be. That was, that was the way I had heard it pronounced. So if anyone's listening to this and I am incorrect on there, I apologize. Um, I, I'm... That, that is the way that I um, heard it pronounced. So that's what we're going to go with for this episode. But um, anyway, so the Nazis burned the Czech village of Lidice for the killing of Reinhard Heydrich, who was considered to be a main architect of the Holocaust. And he was also described by some historians as the darkest figure of the Nazi regime. And part of the reason for that is he was directly responsible for a particular SS task force that murdered more than 2 million people by mass shooting and gassing, including 1.3 million Jews. Now, he was killed in a military operation by British-trained Czech soldiers in May of 1942. And after that happened, the Nazi intelligence falsely linked uh, the Czech soldiers who had assassinated him, um, as well as some resistance member to, members to the village of Lidice. And that led to the what is known as the Lidice Massacre. As revenge for Heydrich's killing, Hitler ordered all of the men of the town to be killed and all of the women and children to be sent to concentration camps. If you want to understand how dark a period of time this is in Europe, there were four women in that town who were pregnant at the time, and all four of them were arrested and were uh, given forced abortions and then sent to the concentration camps. In fact, the only survi survivors of the massacre were the blonde-haired and blue-eyed children who were sent to live with SS families. And one man who was actually in prison during the massacre, and he only learned that it happened when he got released and returned home to find that the entire city had not only been burned to the ground, but it had also been completely leveled. So it was essentially erased from history. And it's stories like these that explain the reason why we have nuclear weapons today. All three of those events that I just told you about happened in the three weeks before the start of the Manhattan Project. Think about that. All of those tragedies, all of those horrors, all of those deaths occurred in the three weeks before the starting of the Manhattan Project. And remember, at this point in time, World War II has been going on for three years already. And so you can see the setting that is the world in the summer of 1942. And the United States at that point could not risk losing that race to nuclear weapons with the Nazis. Now, it's also important to note that we've since been able to see that, truthfully, um, the Nazis were not as close as we thought they were um, during this period of time. They, they were unlikely to really ever beat us to the, the nuclear weapons um, unless we were not trying at all. We were uh, much farther ahead than we thought we were, but at the time, they did not know that. You have to remember, we're in a war at this point in history, right? So everything is very secretive. 
everybody's not sure what the other side has, but everyone is very fearful of the weapons that they may have or may be developing. And so the United States is in this position where they believe they're in this race and they intend to win this race because the consequences of losing it are are so unbelievable that there really is simply no other option. And with the shadows of the war against the Nazis and the terrors of the Holocaust in the background, the United States did set off on a three-year journey to develop nuclear weapons and take them from an idea into a reality. 